I would like to know if uh, coming from a, you did a you know a film based on a comic book. So well, the Batman is actually a very realistic film. <laughs> in Hollywood, that's a very realistic. Yeah, they were they were completely different. I shot Peacemaker before I shot Batman. Um, uh, it was fun to do. Uh, it was fun to do this movie. This movie was um, uh, the 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 uh, what we tried to do through the whole film was never let it slip into Die Hard. Um, now, th there's nothing wrong with Die Hard. We, I, in fact, I really love that movie. But if you're going to do this movie on this budget, this kind of a film. You, it has to be a thriller. The, the the story has to stay real. So you can't take any time out for a love scene. You know, you can't do the the kind of standard trappings of action films. Um, uh, no jokes once once the the chase is on. You know, it has to be real or you're in trouble. I think it's really important that you don't make it some fanatic doing it for Allah, but that you that we not just understand and sympathize, but we might actually do what he did, you know, if, if our family was killed. We, we do understand his actions, and that I think is important. What was important was him saying, you know, uh, this is for the peacemakers, you know, this is right. for the people who make peace. And I thought that was really interesting. But the, the funny thing is, as much as he doesn't want to take uh, um, uh, orders from a woman, he does. He doesn't, you know, when he's in the helicopter, he doesn't cross over until she says go. He does, he, there is still, uh, even though he, you know, he he's a bit, uh, uh, you know, he's a bit off the mark sometimes. He doesn't cross the line. He does take orders, you know, which makes him a little mad, probably, you know, along the way. But um, uh, he, and his approach to terrorism was, um, you know, the the his dealings with terrorism in general have been much more direct. This is this is one where he is now face to face with a man. Uh, like for instance, we as an audience get to see that terror that terrorists' reasons for doing this, so we can empathize with him. My character doesn't see that. We don't. I don't follow his whole storyline and see that his family was killed. I'm just a man who knows that there's a man in New York City who's going to blow up a bomb, and this man has to die. The which happens a lot in movies. We shot the end first, of course, and shot it basically backwards. Um, so what you have to do first is the very first day of shooting, you have to establish how high the stakes are and then you'll come up to them as you go so we decided you know we, we shot the first the first scene we shot was one of the last scenes in the movie and the first couple of takes was kind of lackadaisical and we were just shooting it and stuff and, and then uh, you know Mimi and I kind of went over and to talk to everyone and just said even though this is the first day of shooting this is the end of the movie and the stakes have to be here and it has to be all out because if you're going to talk about if you're going to deal with um, uh, the premise of a man with a bomb in New York City, um, you, you're walking a very fine line for it losing believability. You know, you you can make it a cartoon if you're not very very careful. And if you don't make the stakes unbelievably high, uh, and if you don't make it all out. And so the the secret for us was to just keep it, you know, have the dialogue overlapping, have it just a madhouse of confusion from the minute we learn that there's a nuclear bomb in New York. I didn't when I was. Uh, I do now. Thanks, Guy. Um, uh, I didn't when uh, when we, when you shoot it because you know I'm I'm an actor. I get a phone call from Steven Spielberg and he sends me a script and says this is our first movie. You want to do it? You don't sit around and think, well, there's a lot of pressure there. You just take your job, you know, and you go do it. Now, um, in looking at it, uh, now as the movie's about to come out, sure, there's a little bit of pressure. Most of the pressure is stuff you put on yourself, though. So I'm okay. I, I've been really lucky. Um, uh, you know, I didn't expect the yard to be a success. I didn't expect it to get picked up. So everything for me is a, a, a bit of luck. I've I've been around for a long time working, you know, and not really struggling. Always working, doing some bad projects, being bad in some bad projects. But I've been working a long time. So for me, it was always just about getting jobs. And and now that things are turning around, and I have some say in my career. From now on, the from Peacemaker on, the projects I do are not as much about my availability as about my selection of projects. You know, you get to be more selective. So as I go now, my career will be a little more in my own hands, which worries me. <laughs> scripts, you get you get hundreds of scripts, and the problem is finding. You know, I had to deal with it like I eventually dealt with it in television, which is you got to stop going for the vehicle, and you have to start going for good scripts because ultimately the only thing that saves a, mo a movie or a television show in general is is the structure and the script and that's it and the rest of it doesn't matter there is uh, 
what uh, luckily I hadn't uh, I got famous but I didn't get completely pigeonholed you know I've been able to do you know Dust Till Dawn was a completely different movie than uh, One Fine Day and One Fine Day is completely different than Batman Batman different than this so I haven't gotten stuck in a certain category yet uh, it's probably because none of those <laughs> movies made a lot of money uh, <laughs> were hugely successful um, but uh, but along those lines I'm th so I haven't gotten pigeonholed like some people get when you get famous but there are certainly downsides to it. You know, there, you do lose your privacy. You do lose your time. Um, but that doesn't last. It does, this part of it doesn't last very long. This part you don't stay playing in this kind of bright light for very long before people get sick of seeing you. It's well, it's funny. It makes me laugh. Um, it's embarrassing, and it's it's all of the things. You know, it, it, it's those things where you have to be careful what you wish for. Sometimes, you know, when you're growing up, you think I want to be famous. I want to be rich and famous. Um, and, and it's never exactly what you think it'll be. By the way, I'm not complaining. I have a very good life. You know, I have a great life. Um, very few things are, are unpleasant about what goes on in my life. I think, uh, you know, it's one of, uh, you know, in, in America, we, we, everything's kind of new and young for us. So it's one of our few, this and rock and roll are one of the few things that we, we at times, have done very well. And uh, we've had a few. Orson Welles coming through that were, you know, that are our Matisse's, you know, yeah, a few. First of all, it's important to like them <laughs> if you're going to work with them. I, I don't like, uh, I'm not one of those actors who likes a lot of chaos on a set. I want to, I, I'm, I'm too old and been doing this too long. I don't want to be around and be miserable for three and a half, four months with people who are insane. Nicole Kidman is a great girl. She's fun. She's fun to be around. She's, uh, she lights up a room. She laughs and is a gr just truly a great girl. She also happens to be a great actress. So I was lucky in, on those terms. She's also a movie star. And uh, you know, I'm, I've been very lucky in the last few projects, you know, working with Michelle Pfeiffer and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've been working with some big stars. So I've, I've, had a really, I've been very lucky to be kind of uh, uh, s carefully guarded by some very famous, very talented people along the way.